Okay, another method that can be used to solve a system of equations is called the method of elimination. And in this method, we're going to strategically find an algebraic way to eliminate one of the variables so that we can solve for the other and, um, and then plug that one in back into one of the equations to solve for the first one. <laughs> so I will show you what that means. But um, again, here we have a system of equations of linear equations and we know that these are two they represent a line each one of them does and on the graph these two lines are going to intersect at one point I'm giving you a system that I know that intersects at one point to show you how it works but it is possible that we may end up using this method and we may find out there is no solution or we after doing some computation we may realize that these two equations are exactly the same so then there's infinitely many solutions but in this case, I know there's going to be one point for a solution, and I'm going to show you how we can do that using this particular method. By now, you most likely have already studied the method of substitution. Usually that one's taught first. And um, method of graphing, where you actually visualize the lines on the graph and you see where they intersect and you find the point that way. This is just yet another way of finding out the same information. Okay, so here we have two linear equations. Um, in the method elimination, we want to eliminate one of the variables. And this is a little trick that we can do with algebra. And a lot of kids don't know this until they see this for the first time. You can actually draw a line underneath these two equations, and then you can treat them just like you're adding up two numbers. And you can say, I'm going to add these two equations. And when I add the equations, 5x plus 3x is going to get me 8x negative 6y plus 6y is going to get me 0y and negative 32 plus 48 is going to get me a positive 16. It's just a trick that we can do with algebra. We actually can add these two equations up and it actually works. People have tested this out in a whole variety of ways and found out that it actually works. So now when we have 8x plus 0y equals 16, 0y is the same thing as 0 here. So really, I can write that now as 8x equals 16. What I have just done is I've eliminated the y variable. And now that I have, I can go ahead and continue solving for x and at least find out what that variable is. So if I do that, I would divide both sides by 8. And that would get me, at least we cancel out, and that would get me x equals 2. Oops. Okay. And now I have now I know what the x-coordinate is in our point of solution, that x equals 2. I just need to find out what y equals. And since I know what x equals, I can plug this number in for x into either one of these two equations and then solve for y. It doesn't matter which one. They will both work out to be the same answer as long as you compute it correctly. So I'm going to pick, for the heck of it, I'll pick the second one. So I'm going to rewrite the equation out, but now I'm going to substitute in 2 for x. So instead of x here, I'm putting 2 in for x. And I'm going to add 6y equals 48, just to continue writing the equation out. Now if I start solving this, I'll end up with 6 plus 6y equals 48. And then I'll end up, then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, which will get me 6y equals 42, and then I need to divide 6 on both sides, and that will get me, canceling that out, that will get me y equals 7. And now I know what the y coordinate is. So my solution is the point where the two lines intersect, so I need to write my solution as a point, as the coordinates of a point. So the x always goes first, and then the y coordinate goes next, and that is my solution. So I have just proven to myself that I have one solution. Now, if I want to check myself and make sure I did do the number crunching correctly um, and to see if this point really is the point of solution for these two equations, all I have to do is take 2 for x and 7 for y and plug them in to, both, to either one of these equations or both of them and make sure they end up with a true statement. So in other words, after I do the number crunching, after plugging in 2 and 7 for he, in this equation for 5x minus 6y, what I will end up with is negative 32 equals negative 32. And in here, when I plug in the numbers for x and y here, I'll end up with 48 equals 48. And both of those are true statements, so therefore I will have proven to myself that 
this is truly a point of solution because these numbers work for the coordinates of x and y on both lines. All right, so let's take another example. Again, using the method of elimination. What I wanted to show you, oh, I forgot to point out something. What I wanted to show you is that in these two, in this system of linear equations, all I had to do was add the two equations together, and I was able to eliminate the y variable. In this one, I'm not going to want to add. I'm going to want to subtract the two equations because if I were to subtract the two equations, I would end up with eight, having to do 18y minus 18y, and that's going to get me 0. And that's what I want to get. In the method elimination, I want to use the operation that's going to help me eliminate a variable so I can then solve for the other. So in this case, I'm going to subtract the two equations. It doesn't matter which you do, as long as you do it correctly, it'll still work out. You can still solve for x and y and find the point of solution. So now when I subtract these, here I'm going to get 2x minus 4x, which is negative 2x. Here I already said I'm going to get 0 because 18 minus 18 is 0. I can write that as 0y, or if I want, I can just write that as 0 because 0 times y is 0. And here I have negative 9 minus negative 27. We have to be very careful with our signs in a problem like this. I see tons of mistakes being made not because the wrong process is being followed, but just simply because the wrong number crunching is being done when we're subtracting negative numbers. So I'm going to, just to be extra careful, I'm going to write this out on the side. I'm going to have negative 9, so I wrote that here, minus, I wrote that here, negative 27, negative 27. What I see here is I have a problem that's actually going to get me a positive answer. It's going to be positive 18, okay? Some, okay, so I have positive 18, and now it's going to go here. So now I'm going to rewrite this quickly just so I can see what I'm left with now that I've eliminated a variable. So I have negative 2x equals 18. And now I see all I have to do is just divide by negative 2 on both sides so that I eliminate that number, and I isolate x, and what I'll end up with is x equals negative 9. So x equaling negative 9 now tells me that I can simply take this number, plug it in for x on either one of these two equations, doesn't matter which one. It will work out both ways. It doesn't matter which equation I use. For the heck of it, I'm going to choose the first one. So if I choose the first one, I will write 2 times negative 9, that's the number I'm plugging in, plus 18y equals negative 9. Here, I'm going to have negative 18 plus 18y equals negative 9. Now I'm going to add 18 to both sides, and, I, and that will eliminate this one. That will get me 18y equals 9. And then I will end up with, well, I have to divide by 18 on both sides, which will cancel those two out. And then I will end up with y equals 1 half. If I simplify 9, 18, so I'll get 1 half. So here's the other part of my coordinate, okay, or the y coordinate in my point. So again, here's the x coordinate, here's the y coordinate. You can't just stop right here. The, if they're asking for a solution, what they're asking for is what is the actual coordinates of the point where these two intersect. So I need to write my solution as a point, as the coordinates of a point. So I will write negative 9, 1 half. And because I'm, my 10 minutes are almost up, I'm going to stop right here and do this problem on the next video.